couldn't be faker. But in history, there was really a city gate here. This is an ancient map of Nanchang. There are seven gates on the map. Guangren Gate is the one here. This is map of Nanchang in 1927. We used to have city walls, but it was demolished this year. The city gates were also destroyed. Put the ancient city in the current map. This is where the Guangren Gate is located, not far away from the confluence of the Gan River and the Fu River. Out of the De Shen Gate, a bridge was built in 1936 to connect both sides of the Gan River. Zoom out. This entire area is present-day Nanchang, and this is where the ancient city is. Do you see how much the city has been expanded? This happened pretty much during the past 40 years. In 1997, a new bridge replaced the old bridge built in 1936. Now there are five bridges over the Gan River in the city. Further zoom out. Nanchang was on this traffic artery that connected China from north to south before the 18th century. In early Ming Dynasty, the emperor ordered all ports along the coast to be closed, leaving only Guangzhou open. This transportation route that consisted of the Grand Canal, the Yangtze River, the Gan River, the Meiguan Pass, which is the section on land, and the Pearl River became the artery of the empire. On the east bank of the Gan River is the ancient city of Nanchang. Commodities and products shipped via the Gan River were traded here in the markets. In the 16th century, an Italian priest named Madeo Ricci came to Nanchang via this traffic artery. Unlike another Italian, Marco Polo, who arrived in China 200 years earlier via the Eurasia steppe, Madeo Ricci arrived in China via the sea. By that time, China had lost the land in Central Asia and the Silk Road didn't exist anymore. Madeo Ricci first arrived in Guangzhou, then via the Po River, 
the Meiguan Pass, and the Gan River, he arrived in Nanchang. He spent three years here. In his letter to his friends back in Italy, he said Nanchang was as much as seven times the size of Florence. He was mesmerized by the prosperous markets near the Guangren Gate, and he lived next to one of the markets. This street is called Cotton Street. In this street, it used to be a cotton market. It is one of the three places where Mario Ricci lived in the 16th century. The cotton market was only one of the markets in this area. This alley is called the Vinegar Alley. That's where vinegar stores were located. This alley is called the Radish Alley. Radish is a major farm product of northern Jiangxi region. It was traded here. This alley is called the Luo Alley. Luo is a kind of container made by bamboo. It's also a local product. This street was full of stores of small items and commodities, and even today, it still serves this purpose. Since before I was born, this place has been a wholesale market for small items. It has my childhood memory. When I was little, before each semester, my mom would take me here to buy stationery. She would also buy clothes to make dress for me, such as this one. As I said, when I was a baby, my toys were from here. When I went to school, my stationery was from here. Of course, we could buy them in other stores, but the varieties are most complete and prices are lowest here because it's a wholesale market. Over the years, this area became a rundown area in the city. Buildings were too old for habitation. The city government finally renovated this area and made it a new commercial center. This area is called the Wanshou Palace Markets because of a tourism temple in the middle of this area built 1,700 years ago. It's called the Wanshou Palace, or in English, Longevity Palace. From the Ming Dynasty on, Wanshou palaces were built all over the country because of the rising of a group of merchants. Due to its strategic location, Jiangxi became the most prosperous region in the Ming Dynasty. Prosperity resulted in population boom in this region. However, farmland was not enough to sustain this large population. People started to move to the adjacent Huguang region where there was less population. Some people migrated even further away to southwest China. Some saw business opportunities in other regions of the country. They migrated to a new region not for farming, but opened stores there selling porcelain, tea, timber, herbal medicine that were produced in Jiangxi province. Gradually, these merchants got a name, the Jiangxi merchants. These merchants formed the business associations to prevent competition among themselves and to keep outsiders from setting up business nearby to protect profits. With the accumulation of fortune, the Jiangxi merchants built their guild halls. They remember the Wanshou Palace near the Guangren Gate in their ancestral home Nanchang and decided to build the Wanshou Palace in their new home as guild halls. One after another, 800 Wanshou Palaces were built around the country. There is even one in Singapore. The Wanshou Palace near the Guangren Gate was destroyed. The city government built a new one during the renovation project, but it was closed during the Lunar New Year. I'll take you to another Wanshou Palace in the west of Nanchang. It was one of the two original Wanshou Palaces.
longevity palace in the west of Nanchang. Uh, this one is the origin of all longevity palaces around the country. And let's go inside to take a look. The Wanshu Palace is a tourism temple. It was first built 1,700 years ago and was rebuilt many times. This place is not big. There are two rows of palaces inside. This is inside the Longevity Palace. As you can see, there are eight halls in total, uh, four on each side. Each is holding certain god or deities in Taoism. The most important hall is this one. It holds Xu Xun, for whom the Wanshou Palace was built. He was born in Nanchang 1,700 years ago. When there was a huge flood in the Gan River and Poyang River, he helped local inhabitants fight against the flood. Legend had it that he killed the dragon that caused the flood near the Guangren Gate. So when he died, people set up a Wanshou Palace there in memory of him. This place in the west of Nanchang was where he was living. Another Wanshou Palace was built here. Xu Xun also became a deity in Taoism. The cypress tree outside the hall is said to be planted by him. Not sure if that's true, but it's really an old tree, judging by the size of the trunk. This tree has a history of 1,700 years. This is the sculpture of Laozi, who is considered one of the founders of Taoism. The sculpture depicts the scene of him exiting the Hangu Pass in Oaks. It was in the Hangu Pass while he composed the Dao De Jing. Today, in the Hangu Pass, there is a huge sculpture of Laozi plated with gold. Laozi is considered the three pure deities in Taoism. This hall holds the three pure deities, and Laozi is the one in the left. This hall holds the three female deities. The one in the left is holding a baby. She is the deity who brings children to people. These three deities represent heaven, earth, and water. This hall holds the Jade Emperor, who is like the god in Taoism. Do you still remember the name of the peak of Mount Taishan? Jade Emperor Peak. That's him. Let's go inside to take a look. As I was there, a group of monks were also visiting this Taoism temple. Wanshou palaces in other provinces were evolved into guild halls. Besides worshipping activities, they were also used as the place of administrative body of the Jiangxi guild, as well as the location for gathering of Jiangxi immigrants. Besides the worship halls, they also have a stage for opera which does not exist in this one. Unfortunately, most of those Wanshou palaces were destroyed during the Cultural Revolution during 1960s to 1970s.
With the opening of many other ports along the coast in the 19th century, the Gan River was not the only way to get in and out of China. Furthermore, with the construction of railways bypassing Jiangxi in the 20th century, this region declined and fell behind. Up until now, Jiangxi is among one of the less developed regions in China. But in January of this year, the government announced a plan to build a canal which could be a new opportunity for this region. These are the natural rivers and the ancient Grand Canal. The project would dig two canals here and here. This way, from north to south, the Yellow River, the Yangtze River, Beijing, Hangzhou, Guangzhou, the entire China would be linked by a waterway for the first time in history. It does not only mean a lot for Jiangxi, but also for China. Let's look forward to it. In my next video, I'll visit the Huang Guildhall Complex in Chongqing. I'll take you to look at the structures and layout of a guildhall in detail. You'll also learn an important story of migration of Chinese people. I'm Yan Yan. I make videos about sites of interest in China and histories and stories behind them. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time in Chongqing.